Snestruck. Hello, and welcome to part five of the Snestruck English friendly Super Famicom game series. And since this is part five, I've already covered a ton of games, and this might be the last batch of English friendly platformers, fighting games, beat em ups, puzzle games, that sort of stuff. Or at least until I get to the Satellaview games. Don't worry though, there's still plenty, and I mean plenty, of role playing games that are still being translated. Those games will be looked at in their own series, which you can look at here. Meanwhile, if you want to look at the rest of the English-friendly Super Famicom Game Series videos, here's part one, here's part two, here's part three, and here's part four. I'll start with the Great Battle series. I've already briefly talked about Great Battle 3 in a previous video, but these games are kind of odd in that each one is a completely different genre. Even weirder is that these games serve as a crossover of sorts between Ultraman, Kamen Rider, and Gundam. And not only that, but they're each represented as SD characters. Okay? The first Great Battle game on Super Famicom is SD The Great Battle. This was made really early on in the Super Famicom lifespan, and it kind of shows. It looks and sounds like a beefed up NES game. That's not a bad thing though, this is your typical top-down arcade style shooter akin to stuff like Pocky and Rocky. This is a lot simpler and stripped down, but it's still not a bad game. The Great Battle Gaiden 2 is a side-scrolling platformer that's reminiscent of something like Legend of the Mystical Ninja. It's got the same kind of vibe, plus there are these floating TV things that warp you to mini-games like Breakout, Tetris, and the Shoot'em Up game. So yeah, there's a lot of unexpected variety here. Great Battle 3 is a co-op beat-em-up, and a pretty good one too, even if the graphics look kinda messy at times, but it's a solid game. And hey, it's two-player co-op, so you can't go wrong there. Great Battle 4 goes back to 2D side-scrolling with more of a run-and-gun action slant this time, and this game is freaking fantastic, with tons of overpowered weapons, the ability to float in mid-air, being able to switch between three characters at will, and it's two-player co-op. I'd call this game the best game in the series, but Great Battle 5 might be even better. This is a gallery shooter like Wild Guns, and it's every bit as fun too. Just look at how this entire town just burns to the ground in the background, that's awesome. This game switches back and forth between these levels and a platforming side-scroller, and yes, again, it's two-player co-op. So yeah, you really can't go wrong with any of the five Great Battle games. They're all well worth playing. The fifth game is a little pricey, but the Great Battle cartridges 1 through 4 are all reasonably priced and totally worth checking out. The series has some spin-off games too, like Super Tech U Fight, which is some kind of top-down puzzle platformer, and Battle Pinball, which is, uh, pinball. These games are fine, but not as good as the main Great Battle series. They're definitely playable, so I gotta at least point them out. Moving on, Magical Taruru Tokun Magic Adventure is a platformer based on a comedy manga. It's a very simple game where your primary attack is your own gigantic tongue. What, was this game based on Gene Simmons or something? Anyway, this game does have quite a bit of dialogue that you'll have to skip, but it's still perfectly playable. Popeye Ijiwaru Majo no Maki translates to Popeye Tale of the Sea Hag. This game is laid out like a board game, similar to Flintstone's Treasure of the Sierra Madrock, where each space on the board sends you to a platforming level, a minigame, or a boss fight. You roll the dice, so to speak, and advance as far as you can, but you have to beat other characters like Bluto to the goal. This game is okay, it's certainly playable, and a little something different. Nintama Ranta Roll is an anime series that has a total of six games on the Super Famicom. Some of them aren't all that playable without a patch, but the third game, after skipping lots of dialogue, is a perfectly playable platformer, featuring lots of weapons, some unique level design, and multiple characters to choose from. Gegege no Kitaru Fukatsu Tenma Dayu is one of the most aggressively strange games I've ever played. Your character, Gegege, travels through time to prevent his own death by shooting his own headlights at flying boogers and other strange enemies. Yeah. This game is essentially just a series of boss fights, you don't always get the heal between battles. There's lots of other attacks too, like a whip and throwing shoes, I guess? Yeah, this game is worth checking out just because it's so damn weird. Sute Hakun is a really interesting puzzle platformer where your character is able to assume different shapes and forms in order to get across the screen to clear the stage. This is a really creative game that does a fantastic job explaining all your character's different abilities without any dialogue or exposition. It does get ridiculously hard after the first level, but it's definitely a unique game that's well worth playing. Let's dumb it back down a bit with Genocide 2. This is your classic hack and slash side scrolling action platformer. No puzzles here, just run to the right and kill stuff. This is a solid game, but the boss battles are really tough, just to warn ya. Might as well keep it basic with Iro no Kiba. This is more of a run and gun style game, and it has the kind of difficulty you'd expect as well. But yeah, run to the right, hack and slash, beat the boss. If you're looking for this kind of game, here you go. 
Gekitotsu Danganji Dosha Kesen Battle Mobile. This game is like the evolutionary spy hunter. It's the same kind of gameplay, the same top-down view featuring lots of weapons, but this game is a lot more forgiving, and it's also two-player co-op. This is one of the most fun games on this list. Definitely check this one out. Panic in Nakayoshi World is a top-down single-screen puzzle game where you have to rescue prisoners to clear the stage, and yes, as you can see, there are some characters from Sailor Moon that are playable here. This is essentially just kind of an Adventures of Lolo style ripoff, but it's decent enough, so I thought I'd point it out. A couple racing games here. First is Battlecross. As you can see, this is a super off-road type game that has the same kind of controls. There's tons of weapons and hazards and a total of 12 courses, and it can also support up to 5 players, so this game is worth it for that feature alone. Uchu Race Astro Gogo -Go is a futuristic racing game. I know it kinda sorta looks like F-Zero, but it doesn't really play like that since there's no Mode 7 rotation at all. It keeps a straight ahead view, and there's no health meter. But yeah, both of these games are pretty good if you're looking for a couple new 16-bit racing games you haven't played. Heisei Unu Monogatari Bo Pop and Smash is a multiplayer versus game. If you remember part 4, I talked about Sanrio World Smash Ball, and this game is a lot like that, only without all the Hello Kitty characters, but hey, if you're looking for more games of that nature, here you go. And do you like pinball? Cause Jackie Crush is pinball, but like evil or something. This game has a really cool soundtrack if nothing else, and it definitely looks different from most other console pinball games I've seen. So if you're into this sort of thing, then it's well worth looking into. Kuan Pa is a really cool puzzle game where you play as a colored cube and you have to match the colors on the surface to accumulate enough points within a time limit to clear the stage. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is. This is a really addictive game that I wish I had discovered years ago. This is one of the most interesting games I've found doing one of these videos. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.